And here we are now, after days and days of trials and tribulations, I finally have this beautiful red cape to show off all the hard work I've put in. So what's the plan from here? Well, I'm currently sitting at just over 45k leak points, and I want to get to the Dragon Cup, which is at 56k points. So naturally, that is going to be the next target. I want to focus today on upgrading my shield, because for some reason I've been using this green dragon hide shield. I had to make it for a leak task a long time ago, and I never bothered to upgrade it. I mean, I easily could have made any other kind of dehyde shield better than that. I, I don't know, I, I never cared enough to. Until today, we're going to be going to the Wildy Demi Bosses. I'm going to be going for the Odium Ward and Malediction Ward, because equipping them is leak points. As a ranger, the Odium Ward is going to be especially useful, at least when I'm not in the Wildy, because in the Wildy I use the Web Weaver Bow, which is two-handed, but outside the Wildy I use my crossbow, which I can use a shield with. In June of 2021, when the Blowpipe was nerfed, the Odium Ward was updated to give plus four range strength bonus, making it actually a decent shield behind the Twisted Buckler and Dragonfire Ward. So far, I got each of the ward pieces from Chaos Fanatic, so I'm done with that boss. And then for Crazy Archaeologist, I have the Odium Shard, but I still have to get the Malediction Shard. And the drop rate from all three of the Wildy Demi bosses, it's 1 out of 51 in the league. The Archaeologist also drops the Muddy Key 1 out of 32, and there's a league task to open 10 Muddy Chests. So I'll probably be going for that as well. Oh, that's a new update. They uh, recently just changed the Guardian to spawn when you get into combat. You can toggle that. I won't be forgetting to summon her anymore. Then here is the first one back. Imagine if I just got it right there. No way, the rune crossbows! Huge upgrade for the account. Whenever my prayer starts to run a bit low, I'm just going to teleport to the spirit tree in my POH and then restore at the altar. And I can use the crystal of memories to teleport back in before the boss is even spawned. Oh, there's the first me key. Well, technically it's my second one because I opened the chest once a while ago. So now I only have to get eight more. Oh, there's the Odium Shard. That's the wrong one. There's a Fedora. Yo, there it is, Malediction Shard 2. Cool, so I'm done with the boss. Only problem is that I still have to get seven more muddy keys. That was exactly one hour with the boss. I got 75 kills and I was getting 75 kills per hour. <laughs> There's four chaos dwarves that spawn around here and the drop rate for the muddy key from them is about one in 18 instead of the one in 32 from the boss. So besides the fact it's faster to kill them, there's also four of them, and I can just hop worlds after I kill four. Oh, and this is my first time hopping since I maxed, so now it will be official on the high scores. And if I attack the dwarf from far enough away to where we don't get in combat, then I could hop worlds right away. I won't have to wait the 10 seconds. I found the exact page on the high scores where the maxed people start. It's rank 1945. Is the, So I was like, it's been a few hours since I maxed, but yeah, I was about the top 2,000 people to be the first to max. So <laughs> here's the all caps title for this video. I'm gonna double check if I had any muddy keys in the bank already. I don't, oh, I did have one. Okay, I'm glad I checked. So I only have to get two more. I'm so glad they changed the guardian to automatically spawn when you get into combat because of how often I'm hopping worlds, she doesn't stay there when I hop. But as soon as I start attacking, she's there. And I can guarantee I would not be spawning here every single time I world hop. So it's like a little bit of extra free DPS that I wouldn't have had before the update. No, I just remembered I was supposed to be training on long range with the Web Weaver boat to get the defense XP. I don't know. I guess I accidentally set it to something else at some point. Here's the last muddy key I need. I got seven from the cast dwarves and two from the archaeologist and one a long time ago. This took me about 20 minutes today. Three, two, one, and... I have opened 10 me chests. Next up, we're on to, or last actually, we're on to Scorpia. These are the last two pieces I need for each of the wards. I've done one KC just for the diary or league task. I'm trying to see if I could out DPS the healers. Oh, I have to leave the range prey on because and turn auto retaliate off. Okay, full run through of a kill here. Free Scorpia. At half health, she'll summon the healers, but I've just been out DPSing them for the most part. Uh, especially with the Guardian helping. And the Guardian does actually damage them too because of the AoE effect sometimes. But yeah, this is fine. I could just chill here, kill Scorpia, and remember to leave my overhead on after the kill. I'm glad range works though because Scorpia has really high range defense. And earlier in the league when I tried to come here with, uh, I think it might have been like a rune crossbow or something, I was not hitting at all with range. But clearly now with the Web Weaver bow and doing the extra wieldy damage, and uh, all the perks from the range relic itself. It's going pr it's pretty sweet. I am a Scorpia Adept with 10kc. Just to summarize, to show you how this goes, I just free Scorpia, 
and then I hit her, and that's the whole entire fight. Sometimes she'll get in Frozen near the end of the fight, and she'll get up to me and do a few hits, but it really doesn't matter. I have unlimited food. She doesn't really do that much damage to me. 25 KC. I am a Scorpia veteran. There's the Odium Shard 3. Okay, so the Odium Ward is done now. Just a matter of getting the Malediction Shard. Oh, another Odium Shard. Dang, that's the wrong one. Yo, there it is. 128 KC. So that's like two and a half times the drop rate. Yes, I'm so happy. Now we can make like nachos and dip. I was averaging 100 kills per hour, so that was like an hour and 15 minutes. Do we just use it on here? Yes, combine them together and then combine those together. And there we go. We got the two shields, equip that one and equip that one. They're both elite tasks, so that is 400 points. So let me go to the bank and grab out the um, the red one. I do not know the name. I'm just hoping Tiz will. Yep, Tiz. That's how, that's how you find it in the bank. Now I got the whole. Uh, I got the Charmander, Squirtle, and Bulbasaur here. Gang's all here. I got the full set. Oh, how clean would that look if I used the three of these in the thumbnail? Get that green shield out of here. There's a new sheriff in town. Since I've been rushing for Max the last few days, I haven't really gone out of the way to get league tasks done. But Besides getting 99s, and I feel like there's a bunch of skilling related things that I now have the requirements for that are just waiting for me. So I'm gonna go down the task list and try to knock out a bunch of things. I've never made an anti-fire on the account. I have this because I got I'm pretty sure I got that from DKs. I've never made my own anti-fires though. You need the wilderness to be able to do this because you have to have a lava scale shard in order to make an extended anti-fire potion. It's 200 points. I was literally just in the bank this whole time. It takes two seconds. I have fished a lot of Karambwans on the account. In fact, I have 4,000 raw along with a bunch of cooked ones too. And I'm sitting at 13.6 mil cooking XP. I think this should be enough to get me to 25 mil. So I will try to do that. Should I use the banker's note? I don't know if it's faster to deposit into the bank or to use the banker's note. Whatever. I'll just start going. You want to swap the left click to use with the crown bonds instead of eat because, well, if you're using the banker's note, it makes it easier to do that. And this inventory is 25 million cooking XP. Look at me. My character is so happy right now. Uh, I still have a thousand left. We'll see if that's enough to get me to 35 mil XP. No, it only got me to 28.8 mil. That's kind of far off. How much raw food do I have? I don't know if Oh, I have a lot of sharks. Maybe that'll get me to 35. No, it still didn't get me there. I'm up to 32 mil. I had a bunch of raw monkfish in the bank because uh, Laren's chest and Kraken drops a lot of them. But I ran out of those and now I'm onto the manta rays and that gave me 35 mil cooking XP. There is a shop I can buy raw Karambons from. I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to do more fishing at Karambons, otherwise I could just buy the raw Karambons to get to 50 mil cooking. Here's the shop in Taibawanai where he sells the Karambons. I could just buy a full inventory, note them, and keep on doing that. I wasn't originally going to buy Karambons, but then I went on the wiki and looked up the prices, and I was like, wow, these are so cheap. They're the cheapest in town, in fact. Come down to Tia Dichi's Karambon shop today. Okay, I'm not trying to sound like an ad for them, but they are very cheap. I just spent, uh, I started with one mil. I spent like 400k to get over 3,000 raw Karambons and buy a couple more inventories and 50 million cooking XP. If you have production prodigy, this is legit just free. Man, that's nice though. Another 200 league points. I have to get a full set of skeletal armor, a full set of rock shell armor, and a full set of spine armor. I thought I had a bunch of pieces that I got as drops from DKs and I thought I'd put them in my POH, but I checked my bank, I checked my POH, I only have these two pieces. I'm off to Waterbirth Dungeon to go kill some Dagnoths. Actually, just kidding, I'll be starting off first with the Wallace no, this is terrible. They de-aggro you and then other ones aggro onto you when the first ones de-aggro. This is terrible. Look, 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 come on. But luckily I attack so fast and have the Guardian attacking too that maybe it won't matter. Oh, there's the skull piece already. I really like the wiki pages for these three armor sets because you look up, say, skeletal armor. You scroll down and it shows each piece and then what you need to make each piece. And then these two are just drops from the monsters and... Same for the other two sets. Such so clean, such a clean table. Each of the five pieces that you need to make the outfit, they're all one out of 64, and I just can't get this last piece. I've already been here like 40 minutes, and I've realized that this is really AFK to do, so I should save this for dinner. 
I'm not like eat it for dinner, but do this while I'm eating dinner. So I'll come back to this and do some more lead tasks in the meantime. I want to kill Vorkath for a bit, but I'm kind of low on anti-poisons. This is all I got. So I'm going to buy a few more. For the Vorkath fight, I can't be on the Lunar Spellbook because I have to use Crumble Undead, and that is on the regular Spellbook. Decant these into four dose potions, and we're good to go. All bad news, you cannot summon the Guardian in the Vorkath lair. Here's what I got from Vorkath so far, though. I just got 16 KC because I was going for the Vorkath. Had a long time time ago before I even got my tier 8 relic. I have to get 15 kills without leaving the instance for the league. I think I could do it because I have unlimited food and prayer. I just have to not die pretty much. I just got Vorkath Speed Chaser. <laughs> Sick. Last time I was at Vorkath, I said I had never learned how to Wooks walk and that I wanted to learn at some point during the league. Well, since I'm back at Vork, I'm taking my first baby steps into trying it. I only ended up trying a few times here because I remembered that I'm trying to do the 15 kills in a row without leaving the instance, which I have to not die for. It's pretty easy to die when you're learning how to do this one tick walk. But you can see how this is like the early steps towards progressing to being able to do the one tick back and forth. Right here I'm kind of like sneaking hits in here and there to get used to how I need to time the clicks. For a little bit less risk though, I don't have to wait until it's the acid special phase. I can just try the walk during the normal part of the fight. The only problem is it can be harder to know if you messed up because you're not taking any damage when you mess up. Unless you record yourself then you should probably be be able to tell whether or not you did it right. It was a, uh, oh, master combat achievement, extended encounter. It must be for 10 kills without leaving. All right, this one should be it. Defeat Vorkath 15 times without leaving. Uh, a couple kills in, I, I realized I forgot my range pots. But it was okay, I made it through perfectly fine. And the other thing is I don't need prayer pot here. I didn't have to drink a single sip for uh, all 15 kills. 58 seconds, the sub one minute. Huh. What was that? Whoa, whoa, a lot just happened right there. Hold on. Uh, that was a speed task. That was 46 seconds. There was one combat achievement and then two league tasks for 280 league points. The next thing I was trying to do is five Vorkath kills in a row without taking damage from special attacks and without leaving the instance. The biggest challenge to this is mainly not taking damage from the acid special attack. When Vorkath spits out the acid, there will always be a pool on top of where you're standing. So the first thing is you have to anticipate when the special attacks will occur. Vorkath does a special every seventh attack, so you just count them and then on the seventh, you know that's when you're supposed to move. The first special is random though, so it could be the zombie spawn, but the specials alternate. So if you get the zombie spawn first, then you'll know the next special will be acid. So that's when to move, but what about where to move? Since the acid is random, you don't want to step off your tile, but then go directly into where an acid pool spawns. So in the very back of the room, in the last row near the exit, Acid usually won't spawn there. There are some instances where it can, but for the most part it should be good. If you do want like very detailed in-depth information about this, the Vorkath strategies page on the wiki is very detailed, but I'm not here to explain every single little detail. So that's pretty much it. Really it's just counting to seven for five kills in a row along with having to do everything else in the fight. So if you have ADHD, good luck. Oh, that's so sick. That should be it. Come on. Come on. Yes, defeat Vorkath five times without special damage. That was both a league task and a combat achievement. Oh, that feels good to get done. I remember in a previous league, I was struggling with that so much, but this time around, I was like extra stressed about it, but it really was easy for me. Well, now it's dinner time, so I'm gonna go back to the Dagnoths. There's an update on the points. Wow, I come back here and right away in like, is that what, two kills? I get the skeletal boots. That was the last piece I needed. On to the next type. That was 171 Walasaki KC, by the way. Wow, I, I finished all five already. Look at that, all five of them. It was 56 kills. And again, for each of the five pieces, they're each one out of 64. All right, on to the last set, which is gonna come from the rock crabs up there. Yeah, these guys have super high range defense, so I am not hitting a lot. And that would be, oh no, this would be really annoying you because I definitely can't finish them off. Wow, he's stuck out there, ugh. All right, someone else is in the swirls, I'll hop but I got these black claws as a drop and I was thinking like, wait, I've never seen this item in the game before. So I looked up how you get them and there's three monsters that drop them. It's the giant rock crabs, king sand crabs and Karen and then the soldiers in Birthorp. That's such a weird item, I never thought about that before. Wait, is that the last one? I forgot which one I need. Oh, I think I'm free. 
<laughs> I think I'm finally free. There's 170 rot crab kills. Of course, I went really dry on the ones that take the longest to kill, but that's okay because I'm done now. To make those three sets, I need Dagnoth hide. And I should have gotten more from DKs when I was fighting them because it's a guaranteed drop from DKs, but from Dagnoths, it's like one out of 13. I need 18 total, but actually a little bit less because I have those two pieces already. So I have to get 13 total. So I need nine more hides. I'm gonna go to DKs where I can get the guaranteed hides every kill rather than kill like a hundred plus baby Dagnoths to get this weird RNG drop that's just a guaranteed anyways from the boss. So I went to DKs and I was like, you know what? While I'm here, I should do the combat achievements. This first one was to kill Supreme while under attack by the other two. Next one is killing Rex while under attack by the other two. I had to kill all three DKs within nine seconds of each other. So first I got rid of the Guardian because I wanted to get all their health low, but didn't want her to accidentally kill them. Then when they were all low, I summoned her to help and got them all killed quick enough in time to complete the combat achievement. And then I had to kill Prime while under attack by the other two. Oh, that is funny, his Seer's ring at the same time. Death to the Seer King, more like, thanks for the Seer's ring. I had to bounce a Rune Throne Axe special attack off Rex to kill Prime, and it did kill Prime, but it didn't complete the achievement. So after that, I killed Rex while he was immobilized very easily. I used Entangle on him when he was low health and then quickly killed him. Hey, a warrior's ring. Next was to kill Rex and another DK at the same time. I decided to kill Rex with Prime since Prime is weak to range and I figured Chins would be the easiest way to get this one done. And it was, this was first try. I tried the Rune Throne Axe special attack achievement again and I successfully killed Prime, but it still didn't complete the achievement. I figured maybe they were too close to each other and had to be spread apart in a different way. So I tagged them and made them only have one tile overlapping and this time it worked. Yes, there we go. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's a relief to have done. I almost died there too. <laughs> <laughs> now that I got that little distraction out of the way, I have all the things I need in my inventory to make all three of the armor sets. This guy makes the spined armor set, Skull Grimin makes the rock shell set, and Pier the Seer will make the skeletal set. Cool, so let's put on the spined armor set, and the rock shell set, and the skeletal set. Nice, three tasks right there, 80 points each. That is plus 240 added into the collection. Now I can blend right in with the Dagnoths. It's an underrated armor set for real. Well, for Fashionscape at least. Do you think I look like one of the giant rock crabs? Couldn't even tell me apart from them. Same with the wall. Yeah, I, I look just like a Volosaki. <laughs> and all these sets are going into the POH to save bank space and never be seen again. And now I'm gonna just go do some Mapetola Jill to get those laps up while I work on editing and thumbnail and stuff. I was doing Apatol laps for a little bit, but then I came over to do some woodcutting and I've just been woodcutting all this morning. So I'll probably end up going for 25 mil in my AFK time at some point, or maybe even beyond that, but it is that time to wrap up the video. I'm approaching 48k points. But with that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you have a great day. And I will see you again tomorrow.